Hey friends, so glad to connect with you all online. I'm going to lead us through the service today. If you all haven't yet had a chance to worship God through music and singing, you can pause this video and return back when done. I'm going to take us through the sermon, lead us through a time of communion and then close the service with a benediction. Friends, God is doing something incredible in our midst at Avtar. He's inviting us to grow deeper in our faith as we learn to honestly apply the good news to all aspects of our lives. And it is fitting that in this season we're exploring the letter that Peter wrote to the churches, exploring the themes of exile and what it means to love our neighbor. Let us read our scripture passage from today, which is from 2nd Peter, verse 1 onwards. Therefore, Rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beautiful passage, friends. A bit of background to this letter and to our series. You see, Peter was once a fisherman, but now he's an apostle, a disciple, a witness to the sufferings of Christ, as he writes in 1 Peter 5. He probably wrote the letter from Rome around 62 to 63 AD during Nero's reign. And this letter is addressed to the Christians that are scattered in, in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. And these territories had been impacted by the Greco-Roman culture and had been under the Roman control from the first mid-century BC. So imagine someone like a Peter who's culturally rooted in a very con conservative Jewish tradition, someone who's primarily focused on the church at Jerusalem, is now uh, writing a letter to a multicultural community who are in one sense very different from him. He's writing this letter to a place very similar to Mumbai, a multicultural city. And in our series so far, in the first chapter so far, we've seen what our identity as elected exiles look like in a city like Mumbai. We're called to engage, affirm and challenge aspects of life in our city in the hope to see the love of God transform it. And last week we heard Ashwin challenge us to seek holiness, seeks God's heart for ourselves and our neighbor. And today we're going to look at what our role as living stones in a city like Mumbai is. And my main point for today is this. We're called to build a safe sanctuary for our neighbors in Mumbai. We're going to explore this by thinking through what is our corporate identity, what, our, what is our individual responsibility, and how that leads us to our shared accountability. Let's begin. Number one, our corporate identity. Peter says in, in verse 4, As you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. See, Peter is using a very interesting and to some extent a little confusing metaphor to describe us. Firstly, he tells us that we are stones and that too living ones. What does that even mean? For many of the modern readers in Mumbai, we often see scripture in a very personal way. We see it in terms of how it applies to our lives, 
nothing wrong with it per se but the more we study scripture the more we begin to see how god often addresses us as a community see peter's framework in this letter is often one of a community hearing this and not necessarily for individual application now now don't hear me wrong of course there are personal applications to everything in the scriptures right and we're going to look at that in my second point but it's important to know that one of the main frameworks through which spirituality is expressed according to scripture in the bible is often together as a community how does this apply to the idea of a living stone for the readers of this letter the idea of the stone would have immediately taken them to an image of the temple in fact peter himself clarifies that right in 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 verse 5 he says you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house what was their spiritual house a temple a place of worship you know a temple is a community place where people come together to worship right kari sandom one of the writers of the gospel coalition writes this she says these verses are full of old testament temple imagery the temple in jerusalem was usually significant for the people of israel under the old covenant it was an enormously Im- impressive building constructed with magnificent stones and built on a hill so that everyone could see it this was where god dwelt with his people but because of his holiness it was also where the priest had to offer sacrifices to secure that relationship with him see friends the temple identified them as god's people and established their corporate life and and even their purpose in the world but here in the passage peter reminds these marginalized christians that their collective identity and the purpose in the world are centered on the lord jesus christ he is the living stone of god's house and we too are living stones being built into a spiritual house and the corporate dimension used by peter is very very deliberate we are all like living stones we too once were dead but now have been made alive and are built together into a spiritual house where god dwells by his spirit you can't build a house out of just one stone right many stones are needed but the stones that are to be brought together make up a grand design but now there is no longer a temple of stones we are the living temple united in christ also for a temple to live according to its purpose everyone has a role to play from the upkeep the structure of the temple the ceremonies the celebration the sacrifices all of that happens in a temple happens only because people come together to work together to build together the priest does offer sacrifice on behalf of the people but he cannot alone run the place we need each other and people peter emphasizes that we are not isolated living stones but part of a spiritual house together we make the temple of god see friends uh, uh, while while preparing the sermon i read about the tallest trees in the world uh, are the northern californian redwood trees they are probably as tall as some of the tall buildings in mumbai one would think it's because of their roots being deep but actually these trees have a very shallow root systems that doesn't extend too deep but surprisingly we notice they intertwine with the roots of the other redwood trees they spread hundreds of feet wide and their roots intertwining with the other roots stabilizing one another and sharing nutrients with one another this increases their stability during strong winds and floods and this friends is an amazing picture of how we as a community can be and just as a building is constructed with with various stones of different sizes and shapes our church avatar church is a diverse community our differences are part of god's beautiful design and we must cherish and support one another so that we can all grow into our faith as a community we are part of something way bigger than ourselves we are collectively forming the spiritual house of god and we are not just this he makes sure to add an adjective to this he says living stones living implies that our faith is not static but dynamic we grow we change we serve as god's living testimony to the world our faith is not dead a dead relic but a vibrant life transforming force there's a huge difference between dead religion and faith that is living dead faith creates divisions separates people and you know our city mumbai is such a reflection of this we are spiritual 
we are a very spiritual people yet the landscape of our city clearly shows us the echoes of death and dead faith in our lives you know a song that i was listening to yesterday from the movie gully boy captures this really well he says and i'm going to read it in hindi he says koi mujhko ye bataye kyun ye duri aur majboori is duniya ki kya story kiske haath mein iski dori he continues he says right mein building aasmano ko chori par left mein bachchi bhookhi sadko pe sori see this the, the the singer is pondering on who writes the story of our lives who can explain the vast divide in this city skyscrapers uh, constructed by the best architects in the world where only the wealthiest can survive even selling your kidney won't help you afford rent or one month's rent in some of these buildings right and yet right next to this can be a street kid who's begging you for mere 10 rupees to make it through lunch and as people of faith does our heart beat for the disparity we see in our lives and in the lives of others or is our faith dead mere lip service see friends true living faith true religion does not live for themselves but works with and for others true living faith does not make decisions by themselves but believes in mutual submission true living faith works and serves broken people even through bitterness and unforgiveness true living faith cares about the other as it is our city and it's not their problem it's our problem true living faith sees itself as a means of transformation and true living faith works with others does not run away and isolate so friends this is our corporate identity we are god's living stones we are his temple his sanctuary not just as individuals but now we are collectively a community and he addresses us like that which brings me to my second point our individual responsibility peter uh, the second peter begins with this uh, verse one therefore rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit hypocrisy envy and slander of every kind like newborn babies crave spiritual milk so that it by it you may grow in your salvation now that you have tasted that the lord is good we often describe our culture as either being too individualistic or too communal and as mumbaikars we fall into both of these traps right often we resort to hyper individualism we use this city as a cash cow we are here to make our money and build our kingdom often we 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 resort to living without any kind of mutual submission to each other which means that we often function in a way that suits us suits our personalities we look at it as a church uh, look at our church as as a consumer and we think of how it serves us even when we serve the others it's often done on our terms we usually see others as a bigger problem than we see our own hearts and even right now maybe some of you are upset as to why we are doing this in small groups and not on a as a big church on a sunday you know we want church to serve us just the way we want it anything different from our our sort of rhythm upsets us sometimes upsets us sometimes right and this is an important corrective that preet peter is bringing to a very me centered individualistic culture friends the the bad news is that the world doesn't revolve around you and me it revolves around jesus he's the architect of this temple this spiritual house that we're talking about and he and and he's building us the with, with the building materials that is us we are individually called yes but the acceptance of that call means that we now belong to to each other and we now have an important group identity the sum of which is more significant than the individual part so that's the sum of us and the others of us get caught up in the community identity to the extent that we begin to idolize it and we can't even see its flaws it's no wonder that casteism gender inequality hatred has gone unchecked for so long in certain communities including the church we idolize a community and put out a filter to crowd out any negative thing that we see so peter gives us a healthy framework to check where our hearts are at as a community but also as individuals he says therefore rid yourselves of malice and deceit hypocrisy envy slander and he's saying that when we operate in either of these extreme narratives hyper individualism or too much of a community idolatry we are bound to operate in our flesh resulting in jealousy infighting deceitful behavior and hypocrisy In fact the Bible actually gives us one of the best frameworks to operate both as an individual that are ultimately responsible for their choices but as a community that are meant to serve and and love one another. Each one of us individually 
has a unique role and responsibility within God's spiritual house. Individually, we offer spiritual sacrifices which can include acts of worship, service, a uh, living a life that reflects Christ. We individually, through our calling, contribute to the beautiful spiritual house that is Avtar. So friends, so far we've seen what our corporate identity is and how our individual responsibility to live a sacrificial life for others is, which brings me to my last point, our shared accountability. Peter says in verse 9 says, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. How do we live out this high calling of being a holy nation, God's special possession? You see, our identity as chosen people brings a shared accountability through which we declare God's praises and reflect His light to the world. Our collective actions and, and behavior impact how people outside perceive us, perceive Christ and the church. Most of us, if we are truly honest, we know that we cannot do any of this in our own strength. We have all failed and failed miserably. How many of you couldn't stand someone in the community last week? Let's be honest. How many of you struggled to let go of bitterness last week? How many of you complained and struggled with the city rather than pray and intercede for its people? How many of us live out our calling as a community of broken, selfish people? Or we ignore it? And that's why Peter tells us about the rejected stones. He says, for in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. Sober words, right? But Peter reminds us that the stone that the builders rejected, which became the corner, cornerstone, this stone referring to Christ was rejected by many, but it became the foundation of our faith. Today, you and I can be part of God's sanctuary only because in the sanctuary, there is an altar of sacrifice. Our selfishness crucifies the blameless one. Jesus, the rejected cornerstone, who makes us into accepted living stones. And today, you and I can work through bitterness, persecution, rejection, hurt and pain because He is our rock, our cornerstone on which we stand. Just as Christ was rejected as living stones, when we are confronted with our selfishness or, or, or when people reject us, we must persevere and surrender that to God. Because we are a witness to the world by living out our faith as living stones in a community, we demonstrate to the world that there is transformation in the power of Christ to a broken world. And there is reconciliation available because that's the message of Christ. How do we do that? What does shared accountability look like at Avtar? You know, at Avtar, we talk about the seven rhythms of grace, and one of them is the rhythm of community. Each community has a rhythm. At our Avtar, the way we practice community is primarily through our small groups and our Sunday services. It's a place where we get to grow in friendship through shared experiences, and it becomes the basis for deeper discipleship conversations. And through the brokenness of small groups and the people you meet at Avtar, which is the broken people who attend it, people who sometimes don't forgive, people who sometimes complain too much, people in the community who say they will show up but they don't, leaders who sometimes love more than they need to or are sometimes distant when they need to engage. Through all of this, God is working out and working in our hearts, making broken things beautiful. God will use your small group as a mirror to confront your selfishness but also as a means of grace to, to heal you and to reveal to you, to you how He's working in you through that other person. This means that we need each other. We can't live out our Christian life on our own. We often talk about going to church, don't we? But actually we don't go to church. We go, like we go to a shopping mall or to the dentist. We don't go to the church, we are the church. We go to a building. Once we've understood that, it will change the way we think about our brothers and sisters who are the church with us. 
and just as individual cornerstones or the trees that I talked about uh, support the entire structure of a building, we as members of the community, we have a shared responsibility to support one another. And this support actually makes our faith stronger, right? We bear each other's burdens, as Galatians says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And as living stones, we share in each other's joys and sorrows and we're called to assist and uplift our fellow believers. And the strength of the spiritual house depends on the unity and cooperation of his living stones. So when you choose to walk in bitterness and when you choose to walk in unforgiveness, you impact the unity of the living stone that is Aftar community. When we collectively take accountability for our faith and our actions, we contribute to the growth and strength of the entire spiritual house. And what happens when we don't? We are bound to operate in our flesh. When we operate in our flesh, it results in jealousy, infighting, hypocrisy, deceitful be behavior. Our faith, friends, is interconnected to each other. We cannot grow alone as individuals. As much as we would like to believe, we do. We grow together as a community. And our identity is not just a symbol, it's a call to live out our faith in community, upholding one another in love and accountability. And Peter reminds us that just as the priest uh, in the Old Testament served as intermediaries between God and his people, we are called to be a holy priesthood. You know, we have direct access to God through Christ and we intercede for people in our city and we bring others closer to him. Our lives are a continuous offering to God, including, uh, you know, which includes a life of love, service and obedience. Even as we approach the Christmas season, friends, what an opportunity to be Christ's living stones, you know, loving each other as Christ has loved us, be neighbors that we were meant to be. I'm going to leave us with three questions to reflect on even as I close this sermon in a prayer. How is God challenging you to love someone in the community that you find really hard to? When it comes to the community, does the message of rec reconciliation, which is the gospel message, reconciling with your neighbor, does it cause you to stumble? Or is that your cornerstone, your foundation that you depend on? And lastly, how is your relationship with small groups at Avtar? Do you see it with a me-centered approach? Or do you feel led to, to participate in it? As I leave these three questions, I'm going to pray for us and then transition to communion. Father God, help us be living stones that reflect uh, the reconciling message of your gospel, Lord. Help us see the grand design that we are a part of and not just uh, see it from our personal lens, Lord, but see it from the beautiful building that you're building. And help us be a safe sanctuary for people to experience you in Mumbai. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Friends, we're going to respond to that uh, by breaking bread together. Some of you, who, you know, if your meal isn't ready, you can pause here and come back to the video, all right? This bread and, and cup is a reminder to us today that you and I can be part of God's sanctuary only because in the sanctuary, there is an altar of sacrifice, a selfishness crucifying the blameless one. Jesus, the rejected cornerstone, makes us into accepted living stones. And today, you and I can work through bitterness, challenges, persecution, rejection, hurt and pain, because of the rock on which we stand. Just as Christ was rejected as living stones, when we are confronted with selfishness, we must surrender that to God. Let us eat this bread and drink this cup in remembrance of Jesus' sacrifice. Friends, we're now gonna just quickly transition to the offering, which is a part of our worship service. If you're new here and watching us for the first time, please feel free to let this opportunity uh, pass you by or let this moment go, go by. But use this opportunity to ask God, how can you be a blessing to someone else this coming week? For those of us who are part of this community, I invite you to give. The link should be there in the description or the QR code should be here. If you need more details on how to give, please do get in touch with us or with me or any of the leaders and we'll give you more details, all right? Awesome. Hope you were all ministered through the message today and you had a good time in your groups so worshipping together. Appreciate all of you working through the chaos and keeping Jesus at the center. An experience like this can really bring us together as we work through the challenges 
uh, and work through the, the challenges that we face even logistically look forward to seeing all of you next week back at our saint paul's venue i'm going to close the service in a blessing right so even as you take on this week may you know the love of your father who calls you to be part of his family you're not alone anymore may you know the sacrifice of his son the righteous one crucified to bring us back home and may you know the power of the holy spirit that binds our hearts together as one community amen see you all next week friends at st paul's bye